featuring Mississippi State faculty, staff, researchers, and alumni who are eager to, eager to share their work and expertise on a wide variety of issues and topics, show, showcasing some of the extraordinary people and programs within the MSU community. Today's installment of Bulldog Bites, enhancing the experience at MSU, how campus experience can be enhanced through investment in outdoor spaces. We're so very pleased to have our featured speakers, Mr. Les Potts and Mr. Saunders Ramsey. Les Potts recently assumed the role of Associate Vice President for Administration. He's been a key member of the university's Division of Finance and Administration for the past 11 years, primarily involved in university budgets, appropriations, contract negotiations, and other projects. He recently served as a project liaison for the first of a kind public-private partnership with a national developer, College View, $70 million mixed-use development that opened last fall. As AVP, his role has expanded to include administrative oversight, campus services, maintenance. He holds a degree from Birmingham Southern College in his graduate studies at Delta State University. He and his family have called Starkville home for the past 18 years. Saunders Ramsey, who joined the MSU this spring, is the Executive Director of Campus Services at, uh, here at MSU. He uh, includes oversight of planning, design, and construction on major capital projects, maintenance, repair, and custodial services for over 100 university buildings, maintenance of more than 1,500 acres of campus landscape, as well as maintenance, repairs, and construction of MSU's utilities, distribution, and infrastructure. He came to us from Neil Schaefer, uh, an engineering planning construction firm, and he led their Starkville office, working closely with leaders of government, economic development, and education on strategic projects aimed at improving quality of life in area communities. He's a Starkville native and former captain of the Diamond Dogs baseball team. He earned bachelor's degrees in civil engineering from MSU in 2005, and in 2009, a master's degree in civil engineering from the University of Memphis. As we remind our viewing audience, uh, we encourage you to utilize our Q&A feature via WebEx. For those that are viewing via uh, Facebook Live, please submit your questions via the Facebook Live chat. Uh, gentlemen, it's really our pleasure to have you this morning. We appreciate your time and welcome you to Bulldog Bites. And at this time, I'd like to turn the program over to Les Potts and Saunders Ramsey. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, I think that I have uh, the first go here, and it's the easy part. Um, I, I wanted to um, just really uh, um, tell you, tell everyone that I'm thankful to have the opportunity to talk to just for a few minutes um, this important group and share, um, uh, introduce Saunders Ramsey and, and let him share um, uh, a presentation with you, and um, I, I, I really wanted to to uh, start out and 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 say and just very generally. I know that everyone. Uh, I don't. I don't want to talk about COVID nineteen. This is a different um, a different topic today. But we do have um, several um, you know things that have happened that. Um, Though it's been just a, a rough uh, number of months in dealing with different things, there are things to be excited about um, going on here. And one is that I just found out yesterday that we've had a, a uh, seventy-one percent drop in in student uh, positive cases over the last fourteen days. A good trend. Um, you know, we we had to prepare for the worst, and things so far things can change day to day have been going. Uh, well, uh, in our favor in, in all our preparation um, to open the semester um, seems to uh, be paying off at this point. And I just, I really wanted to say, um, you know, to our, to, to our, to Dr. Keenum and the vice presidents that I think that in a situation that was unprecedented, they have done just a fantastic job to prepare us um, as well as we could be prepared. I'm coming into this, but um, I am um, just a, for just a minute or so, just to tell you how um, I got here and 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 lay out um, uh, Saunders' arrival. We um, last year 
we had a vice president, uh, former Lieutenant Governor Amy Tuck, who retired as VP of Campus Services. And at the same time, within two weeks, her assistant vice president announced his retirement. He had been here for 40 years. So that was a, a ton of uh, institutional knowledge, uh, knowledge that sort of, you know, left at one time. And as is common among our peers, a lot of other universities, the campus services uh, facilities division resides um, in uh, in an administration or finance and administration um, division. And uh, Dr. Keenum asked um, our CFO, Don Zant, who's been here for a decade as well um, in that position, um, just been at the university a lot longer than that, um, to uh, take the reins. And we immediately set about, as you can imagine, um, in my, you know, uh, referencing my background and his very uh, little to no expertise in a lot of the technical areas in this division. And so we immediately set about to find someone with that expertise. Um, we had national interest in the uh, executive director of campus services position, which Saunders now fills. Um, and I just wanted to briefly say about him in a very, very strong pool of, of candidates for this position um, that's very important. He, he set himself apart with, uh, with passion and, and, and really creativity um, he brought a great mix of private sector experience, but also university experience. He was already involved in dozens of projects as an engineer um, for Neil Schaefer, and and then um, and then also as I as I got to know uh, Saunders during that process, and his reputation preceded him. This fact that he's just a good person, and I've enjoyed beginning to work with him over the last few months, even though it's been a strange few months. His first day was we went into, you know, uh, statewide lockdown by the governor's order. But um, I'm going to turn this over to him. And uh, and I very much wanted to reiterate my appreciation um, uh, to uh, for having the opportunity uh, to speak with you all today. And Saunders, I'll give it to you. Awesome. Um, thank you, Les. Uh, kind words and again to the um, Alumni Association. Just thank you guys for giving us the opportunity and the platform to kind of educate um, some of the most important people to our university, uh, which is our alumni, and just kind of talk through uh, what we're doing on campus. And uh, specifically today, I want to talk about how uh, one of our goals is to enhance uh, your experience on campus. Um, through the investment in public spaces, and I'll kind of get into what that means and how, how that affects you and our campus. Um, I, I think I want to start off by uh, kind of telling you a little bit about who I am. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I feel like my background has kind of shaped me into who I am today, and then just in the people that have been influential on me and shaping my mind in a way that Les mentioned, which is uh, passion and creativity. And he mentioned I grew up in Starkville. Um, uh, born and raised here, uh, what, what that means for me as a child is I spent a lot of time on campus. Um, I spent time at athletic events. I spent time riding my bike, as our six-year-old did, uh, where he learned to ride his bike the other day on campus. And um, campus in Starkville has always been very important to me. Um, it, it had always been very important personally. Um, and then as I grew professionally, uh, obviously that passion uh, continued to grow with me. Um, when I graduated in civil engineering here, I immediately moved to Nashville, um, which is where I started dating uh, my wife, uh, Jordan. Um, and uh, she had an opportunity to work in Memphis and with FedEx. And so we both moved to Memphis uh, and we were married there. A unique thing happened in Memphis that directly contributed to my passion for public space. And that's really related to Jordan and her job. Uh, she was an internal auditor for FedEx. And she traveled all over the world um, to audit different uh, areas of the company. And uh, we were early in our marriage, so we wanted to spend time together. If I wanted to see her for some weeks at a time, we would, I would go join her um, 
in these locations uh, while she worked, I would spend time uh, taking walks or, or um, exercising or going to just see what different places had to offer. And I didn't know it at the time, but it really started to shape me uh, and my understanding of how design and investment in public spaces uh, could change the way that you interacted with that space or that even that city, in our case, um, our campus. Um, you know, locally, even in the United States, um, Jordan and I, she would work in San Antonio and we would walk the river walk. Um, we visited New York and Central Park. We've been to 30A in Florida. And you really start to see that people have taken pride in these spaces. And if you're listening, you, you know what I mean. You, you go to a space and it, it just feels different. Um, it's almost addictive. You almost want to go back and you want to you want to see it. You want to feel it. You want to be a part of it. And, um, you know, if you think of your favorite spaces to be, most of the time, those are public spaces. Those are spaces that anybody can visit. Um, they just feel right. They, the, the sense of scale is right. Um, it's just a unique combination of space that you're pulled to and you're drawn to. When I moved to Starkville, uh, after leaving Memphis to work for Neil Schaefer, um, they're a civil engineering firm, and that allowed me to have professional involvement in um, projects within the city and on campus. And I, I tried really hard if, it, if the university had asked us to look at a sidewalk project or a um, ADA project or a paving project, that not just to look at those projects as concrete or asphalt, but really think about how the users of those spaces would interact with it, um, whether that's bike lanes or whether that's um, uh, crosswalk uh, beautification, whether that's um, creating a um, park space that maybe you wouldn't have thought of uh, when you're just thinking about ADA. But so, so really in the private sector, I tried to think maybe beyond what was asked of us. And, um, and I had professional support from Neil Schaefer to think that way. I had support from MSU to allow us to invest that way. And so as Les mentioned, that transition to the university kind of had started happening in a consultant role, um, but now being on this side and with less blessing with the opportunity, um, it really allowed me the opportunity to look at campus, the entire campus, as not just an institution and not just buildings that people go to classes, and um, but really look at it as a uh, as its own public space because that's really what it is. Um, when I was on campus um, during COVID. A lot of people would come on campus to ride bikes or to visit. Um, and I noticed as I was walking around familiarizing myself with this giant campus I had just inherited professionally that they were asking me about, you know, where are statues and um, where can we visit and what can we see? And it almost energized me even further um, that when the whole place was shut down, people were addicted to Mississippi State campus and, and really were drawn here. And um, as soon as I got here, uh, Les introduced me to a project that the Student Association had wanted to do. Uh, they had presented Les prior to my arrival with a desire to add seating on campus. And they were asking for places that had shade. They were asking for places that felt nice. They were asking for places that were logical, close to dining facilities, close to classrooms. And, and it really, Again, I use it again, the word again, energize me. These, these students are asking for the same thing that Les and I have prioritized um, and they're asking for it. So that's a project that's ongoing right now. Um, you'll see an example here briefly of us uh, listening to the students and implementing it, maybe not exactly how they drew it, but in a way that maybe is even more beneficial to them and even more uh, functional for their use. And in the process, you're creating a more beautiful campus, right? Um, it doesn't just have to be functional. It can be both functional and beautiful um, and enjoyable. And so that's uh, that kind of leads me to where I am today. And uh, I want to walk you through in the next few minutes some of the projects you're working on. Um, thank you for listening to my uh, personal spiel. And now I'm going to try to share my screen and we'll keep going. Les, uh, can you confirm you can see it? Yep, got it. Awesome. Okay, so um, 
as you're looking through these, I kind of want you to think about that sometimes it's function, sometimes it's beautification. Uh, we always want to talk about interaction. How can people use the space, interact with the space, and possibly even tell the public that they're in that space? So um, we're undergoing a master plan right now and um, a master plan update. This is a photo from our previous master plan. I put it at the beginning because I want you to see how um, the street trees and the pedestrian connections and the shade and the people really make up what our campus is. Um, this is a future space that would be created after some uh, capital projects are uh, finalized. Um, and what I want you to see uh, a couple things, one being ironic. Uh, one of the things is the, the shade and the filtered light, the, the space that people enjoy to be in. Um, the other is that um, we have buildings here, but it's not the only priority. Uh, we've placed pro priority on um, student engagement and how they can spend time together. The ironic part is that they're sitting on curbs and they're sitting on the ground. And I, I kind of like that because it kind of lends ourselves to what if there was a space where they could um, sit face to face uh, like a bistro table that you'll see in a, little, in a second or a bench if they needed to rest. Um, so I just kind of wanted you to visually see uh, spaces that we're trying to create. The last photo I wanted to show you is this uh, photo of Bully. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many people come to campus and uh, and take a photo with this uh, with with our mascot. And uh, what I like about that is obviously we're proud of where of who we are, but we also allow uh, these people to post these photos on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and we're telling people outside of the campus uh, where you are, how much you love it, how beautiful it is, and that you're here and that you're proud to be here. And I hope in our uh, in our administration that we're able to uh, create more and more of these opportunities throughout campus. And, and we've got some ideas for that. So uh, one of the first things we want to talk about is just our entry signage. Um, you know this very well. If you're alumni, this is on Russell Street. Uh, people take graduation photos here. They uh, they they take photos here to, uh, when they get on campus for the first time. So formalizing that space. Uh, with them, some seat walls and allowing um, the photo opportunity to still occur, but um, just making this entrance uh, more grand and um, and more beautiful. Just another photo of how we could do that. Um, we're working on this now, and we hope to um, to get some bids in in the next few um, weeks or month, and um, hopefully we'll go to construction pretty soon. Uh, the old entrance to campus, uh, class of 1922 monument. Uh, this is right outside the Hunter Henry Center. If you haven't seen it, uh, that's one of the things I want to work on is that so let's bring some attention to this space and let's make it even more beautiful. Let's um, let's create a seating opportunity, an engagement opportunity, and um, just highlight uh, this monument and kind of be telling the story of how you used to enter campus. Another view of that. This is a project that I'm particularly fond of. This is the Lee Hall Promenade. Um, um, early when I got here, uh, Dr. Keenum and Don Zan, our ball, uh, mine and Les's boss, asked for a sidewalk here. Les and I asked if we could have a few more days and a little bit more time to think about this space more than just a sidewalk. Um, we we would we want to create the sidewalk because it's needed, but can we provide shade? Can we provide interaction? Is there a chance to provide a uh, a statue or something that would allow um, interaction and uh, social media and uh, tell our story a little bit better. So we came up with this concept um, where uh, where we provided bistro tables for face to face interaction, similar to a park setting. We added more shade and we actually sloped the lawn here um, for a potential sculpture location. The sloped lawn uh, encourages people to bring a blanket, uh, sit and engage with the space rather than it being maybe flat and wet and, and you're kind of curious, can I spend time there, can I not? Uh, we hope this is a space that um, continues to engage. And this is actually built and we are extremely proud of this. I, we couldn't get the tables unfolded uh, before students wanted to sit in this space and it was just a, a very early moment of pride and um, for us and just really giving the students what they asked for while giving the president what he asked for, Dr. and Don Zant, and making sure that we 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 solve the uh, functional issue, which is uh, um, erosion 
and pedestrian connection, but we added um, the beautification part and the engagement part. Um, this is something we're working on now, the class of 1924 monument. Um, some of you may know this is here, some of you may not, because it used to be surrounded by landscape material. This is just east of the YMCA, across from the Union. Um, this is a free speech monument. This is a place where they used to engage and debate and discuss uh, topics of the day. Um, in the day and the age we're in now, um, this is a very important that we um, that we tell that story, that we engage with people, that we discuss differences, that we talk about the topics of the day, but that's the functional side, right? So the, the beautification side is how can we make this space inviting? How can we allow people to sit, engage with each other, but do it in a setting that is beautiful, that is uh, safe, that is, um, that is comfortable, that is addictive. Um, this is a space that I hope to, just to say that we will be investing in in the next couple months and hopefully go to construction pretty soon. Interactive icons, uh, I mentioned photos, I mentioned statues, I mentioned how do we post on social media and how do we get people telling people they're at Mississippi State and they love it. Um, I hope Oliver's watching because he'll be really proud that he's made the presentation. Uh, <laughs> so this is a space between Perry Cafeteria and Montgomery Hall um, that we wanted to look at as part of an admissions project um, where admissions could say that there's a plaza that when they bring people on tours or they bring people to campus for the first time uh, or people enroll here, that they can have a place they go to and say that they arrived, that they're here, that they are proud to be a Mississippi State Bulldog. Um, and uh, we've got on the left side of the photo, you see the Hale State letters. Uh, we're kind of envisioning the eye maybe remaining glass uh, where a student could kind of step in that space, uh, take a photo, post it on social media, and basically would be part of who we are and what we're doing and what we stand for. So I'm really excited about this project. And um, we are um, looking for funding and looking for buy-in. And uh, this is a project that I um, would love to see um, get done soon. So, um, some projects um, are beautification and some projects are functional, some are both. Uh, this is a project uh, near TK Martin Center, the Bulldog Way project will be coming in pretty soon as a new east entrance to, entrance to campus. And we just wanted to take a new roadway, which is going to be very functional, and make sure that we connected our spaces to things that we want the public to engage with. Uh, the Lincoln exhibit, the um, uh, the Grant Library, uh, you know, bringing people to the uh, to the library and um, showing them how to get there. And as they travel from the parking lot on your left to the library on their right, giving them an environment that is comfortable, that this that is safe, that is directive, um, meaning, you know, provide a kiosk that they know what they're going to see. They know where to go. Um, tell the story as they're enjoying the um, the area that we've created. Um, if some of you know what it looks like now, um, this will be a slight change. It's a repositioning of the TK Martin playground for um, for an area that we're so proud of, which is the TK Martin Center, and just giving the, uh, the young children safer access to their um, parking lot. And then on the right side of the photo, just connecting that uh, that walkway, as I mentioned. The quad. Um, the old Subtle Hall site, which is across the street from um, Old Main. This is a space that right now is just grass. Um, we are re-envisioning this space uh, not to be a building. Um, see if this space could be used for a passive use area, play catch, um, lay on a blanket and study, um, just sit and visit and be still, get outdoors, um, enjoy the campus. Um, so just kind of re-envisioning this space um, on your left, you've got an institutional building. On the right, you've got a newly created passive use space that, um, that the people engage with um, outdoors. I'll leave this one for the last because we're about to go to construction on this project. This is at McCool Hall. On the top of your photo, you'll see the union. Um, on the bottom is McCool Hall. There's a grass space here right now that is just uh, but basically just function. It just leads you to different entrances to the building. Um, we want to reimagine this space to have more shade, more seating, uh, ping pong tables for student en engagement, for, for entertainment, 
uh, additional seating like bistro tables for face-to-face -face interaction, uh, benches for resting opportunities and for, um, uh, and for more seating. And this is kind of what this space will look like. Um, I'm really proud of this one. Um, this was going on before I got here, but it's something that we pulled to uh, uh, pulled funding together and went and went out to bid and we're going to construction this fall. So keep an eye on this space. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm trying to rush because I know we're short on time and you guys have got to eat lunch. But, um, you know, I did not mention that um, that we're developing that personally we're developing a neighborhood in Adelaide down um, south of Montgomery in Starkville. The reason I bring it up is that is uh, uh, Jordan and I live there and the design of that neighborhood and the architecture and the landscape. It proved to me that the built environment can change the way people interact. It changes their their appreciation for others. Um, it changes their appreciation for nature. It changes their appreciation for architecture. And that is that is something I live in every day. We go home, we see how the kids interact, we see how the adults interact, and we see how important um, these items are. And I just believe that's what we can do at Mississippi State. Uh, we're really good. We're really good. It's already beautiful. Um, we're really good at research. We're really good at education. Um, we're really good at a lot of things. Um, mine and Les's goal is to take our public space, enhance it, invest in it, and change it so much that when you come back to campus, um, that you say, you know what, I, I notice, I notice a difference. Um, it's addictive. I want to be here. I enjoy being here, and I'm proud to be here. And if uh, in a year or two from now, if we've done that and we've accomplished that then I believe that our campus experience will be improved and that we will done our will have done our job. And um, it's 1124 and I, I got a little long. If there's any questions, please post those in the Q&A. Um, I, I can see them and it, I haven't had any yet, uh, Saunders. But, um, I wanted to add one thing, just follow up on, on, on what you were saying about these spaces and one thing going back to the strange period of time that we've been in is when you look at our enrollment and you know we we have successfully offered this fall you know 70 percent of our classes have an in-person component right um, you know we're not um uh we don't have the numbers of students that we would have had there not been this uh this change um over the spring, but it, it it reflects to me how much they want to be here, right? I mean, we had, you know, that in, even in this time, uh, our enrollment, which we were we were uh, plant scenario planning, you know, just scary numbers, um, and here we're going to have record enrollment on campus, uh, um, and 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 for the state, for that matter. Um, but I, I, I wanted to add one more thing um, is from a uh, from a student success standpoint, how important the environment is and something that um, that someone sent to me um, is that built structure signage landscaping can actually buoy students feelings of well being belonging and, I, and that goes yeah. so well with what you're trying to do. Um, 100%. I mean, if we if we as an institution decide to move purely functional, meaning just get them to class as fast as we can, teach them what they need to know and send them back to their dorm room. Mm -hmm. A, they're not going to enjoy it. B, the learning the learning environment is is such that that they're not going to be addicted to it. They're not going to come back, right? And so, absolutely. Um your walk to class, your time between classes, your time in the evening, you know, all of those things are what makes an on-campus experience better than an online experience, right? And, and in the past, it has been just an opportunity to create a great space. In my opinion, going forward, it's going to be a competition. Um, and can we create an environment in which they choose us over online? And I believe that that that's that's what we're in the process of doing. Um, 
I do. I do have. Um, I, I, just, I didn't. Sorry to interrupt you, Saunders. I do have some questions coming in. Yep. Can I start those. Yep. Um, and the first one is: there a certain timeline for these projects? Um, I don't know if you want to address either of us. Yeah. Uh, you know, the McCool Hall project going right now. The George Hall or the the, the debate project is uh, under design right now, and we hope to fund it this fall and maybe go to construction this fall. Uh, the entry signage is out to bid right now or pretty soon. So again, hopefully this fall, some of your larger initiatives, like the quad, the TK Martin gateway, um, those are unfunded, but they're future visions, right? That we don't do something that negatively impacts those projects. Um, the, uh, the hail state letters, the interactive icon, um, that one's probably at the top of my wish list. Because I think it's uh, it's a it's a significant impact really quickly, but we don't yet have funding for that. That's something that we're we're strategizing how to accomplish. So there's not a timeline on that. So um, McCall is going to on construction now. So, and I think that it's safely we would like to initiate uh, design, initiate and complete these projects, you know, in succession as we, as funding yep. becomes available and we can do them. Um, um, so, okay, uh, Saunders, here's another question. Can you speak to the addition of parking garage, parking garages, okay, hold on just a minute. Uh, parking garages and spaces on campus to help make the campus more pedestrian friendly. Yeah, absolutely. So, First of all, um, when I got hired here, I cannot say enough about um, our new executive director of transportation, Jeremiah Dumas. And he's actually a, a, a landscape architect who is in charge of transportation, which is a unique benefit to us because he can appreciate both. And um, he, uh, he has done a tremendous job of prioritizing groups of spaces so that we meet the counts that we need to continue to grow but put those in locations that don't impact um, the experience on campus. Um, mm -hmm. And um, also his, the, um, the smart buses that, are, that we use to transport students all around campus, all that is very strategic um, so that we provide the function, which is parking and access, but that we don't lose um, kind of that feeling of a unique campus, which we all love. Great. So let, let me get this straight. We've got an engineer in charge of landscape and and landscape architect in front of in charge of transportation. Is that you're, right? you're a genius, Les? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, are there any plans for expanding outdoor seating and an environment around the Mathis store? So, um, I can tell you now that we are in the process. Uh, matter of fact, two weeks ago, I met with a landscape architect. And we, we looked around campus and we tried to find pockets throughout campus that we can improve. Um, we're starting at the core of campus, uh, expanding out. Uh, that is something, so the answer to your question is there's no plans today, but because you asked it, um, that's something that uh, Les and I can look into and see if there's some, some opportunities there. Uh, because I know that is a retail environment, it's an environment that uh, sells food, that sells things that people can consume and, and kind of enjoy their time there and not feel like they have to drive to and get out. So I think the point of the question is noted. So that's something we'll have to look into. There's another one too about the city of Starkville. Are you totally focused on campus beautification? Or are you working on collaborations with the city of Starkville? Um, so in my previous life as an engineer, I did a lot of work with the city of Starkville and um, I'm very proud of the relationships that um, exist there with the mayor and the aldermen and um, the city engineer and uh, the city planner. And, and so now coming over here, we are already talking to them about ways to connect pedestrians, connect bicycles, potentially um, enhance the recycling programs. Um, the, the town and gown relationship has never been any better. And we are, um, we're in the process now of, of talking to them about um, as many things as we can. We talked about, we're talking soon about our pavement management process. Um, how do we, how do we pave differently? Uh, how do we manage pavement differently? So, um, that collaboration is ongoing. So that's, uh, I hope that answers that question. Yeah, I'm sorry, Taylor. I didn't mean, I didn't skip that intentionally. I'm just, uh, missed it, but, um, I think Saunders, um, there are no more questions that I see here. 
but I wanted to ask uh, how what what would be your advice to to this community to our stakeholders on how they might be involved in what we're doing or trying to do here? Yeah, so probably the easiest thing is to understand that we're that we're trying really hard to change what we have and just telling that story, getting out there and educating our alumni um, and letting them know to be looking for opportunities to see the change we're making, to be supportive, to speak supportively, um, to encourage. Um, that's probably the easiest thing. Um, the next level of involvement um, is something that we're going to roll out this fall um, is a campus beautification initiative. Uh, we're going to work with the foundation and the alumni association on that. Um, um, Georgia Carter uh, will be helping us run that and the um, contact I think was posted earlier. We can post that again at the end. But what you'll see is that um, one of my big passions when I first got here was tree planting and, and, and establishing a lot of the shade that we've lost over the years. So this fall, uh, we're going to be planting, um, I hope to say hundreds of trees. Don't quote me on that. Um, it's due to uh, time and, uh, and money, obviously. But um, we're going to provide our alumni or, or just supporters in general with an opportunity to in, uh, be a part of that. Uh, also, seating that will be a part of that campus beautification initiative with bistro tables and, and uh, uh, benches and things like that. So really trying to show the public that they can be a part of changing the spaces they enjoy. Right. So so kind of combining the effort. Um, it's definitely not a requirement, but. If nothing else, it gets out there that we're trying to make a change and that we're trying to improve and um, and we want you to be a part of that. Um, but um, so that's that's uh, that's the second thing. And then uh, another pretty easy one is come visit, take pictures and post it on social media. Right. So tell people what we're doing. Find a spot that you love, spot, find a spot you want to engage with um, and post it on social media and tell people how proud of your campus you are. and. Um, and I think that's that's pretty pretty uh, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and would be would go a long way to kind of enhance what we're trying to accomplish for you. Absolutely, and that that is one reason why I so much appreciated this invitation because uh, you know this fall is unusual, and there are fewer opportunities. Um, uh, you know, you would think for people to visit, and we wanted to. Um, just sort of share our excitement and I'm, I am uh, thrilled with the team that we have in place and um, I think that there are great things to come you will notice. And so. yeah. Well, thank you guys. Um, I did want to mention that they did record this. So if you missed an early part of the um, of the presentation, you can go back and watch it. If you think somebody else needs to see it, uh, that'll be available. I think they said maybe even as early as tomorrow. So. Um, I can't see you, um, but I appreciate you guys uh, being here and listening. I appreciate whoever you might share it with and um, continue to encourage and continue to contribute and be a part of our campus. That's what we're here to do is to make it better and, uh, and for you to enjoy it. So I think we've been instructed to just say thank you and to go ahead and log off. And uh, if, if you need to watch it, it's just they just posted it. Uh, it'll be on the alumni website tomorrow at alumni.msstate.edu slash bulldog 